Boom! Shake the room, Fire Nation. And today I have an incredible speech, an amazing commencement address by Admiral William H. McRaven. Make your bed. This speech was delivered at the commencement address to the graduates of the University of Texas at Austin on May 17th, 2014. And I can tell you, Fire Nation, being a military veteran and officer in the Army for eight years, I really jived with this commencement address. But those of you that have not served, all the way to those of you that have served your entire life, this will be incredibly powerful for you to listen to. I still have chills from reading this. It was absolutely incredible. So many great lessons, so many great takeaways. And we'll dive in when we get back from Think and our sponsor. Thinkific is the best platform to create, market, and sell your online courses. And we speak from three years of personal experience. Right now, you can sign up for one month free on the Thinkific Pro Plan, plus leverage over $1,000 worth of training bonuses free. Just visit thinkific.com slash fire. The fitness industry is a $94 billion industry and it's not showing any signs of slowing down. F45 is here to prove it and they're inviting you to join them. Inquire today about owning your own F45 franchise at F45invest.com slash fire. That's F the number 45, F45invest.com slash fire. All right, Fire Nation, let's dive into the speech by Admiral William H. McRaven, Make Your Bed. President Powers, Provost Fens, deans, members of the faculty, family, and friends, and most importantly, the class of 2014, congratulations on your achievements. It's been almost 37 years to the day that I graduated from UT. I remember a lot of things about that day. I remember I had a throbbing headache from a party the night before. I remember I had a serious girlfriend whom I later married. That's important to remember, by the way. And I remember I was getting commissioned in the Navy that day. But of all the things I remember, I don't have a clue who the commencement speaker was that evening, and I certainly remember anything they said. So, acknowledging that fact, if I can't make this commencement speech memorable, I will at least try to make it short. The university's slogan is, what starts here changes the world. I have to admit, I kind of like it. What starts here changes the world. Tonight, there are almost 8,000 students graduating from UT. That great paragon of analytical rigor, ask.com, says that the average American will meet 10,000 people in their lifetime. That's a lot of folks. But if every one of you changed the lives of just 10 people, and each one of those folks changed the lives of another 10 people, just 10, then in five generations, 125 years, the class of 2014 will have changed the lives of 800 million people. 800 million people. Think of it. Over twice the population of the United States. Go one more generation, you can change the entire population of the world. 8 billion people. If you think it's hard to change the lives of 10 people, change their lives forever, you're wrong. I saw it happen every day in Iraq and Afghanistan. A young army officer makes a decision to go left instead of right down a road in Baghdad, and the 10 soldiers in his squad are saved from a close-in ambush. In Kandahar province, Afghanistan, a non-commissioned officer from a female engagement team senses something isn't right and directs the infantry platoon away from a 500-pound IED, saving the lives of a dozen soldiers. But if you think about it, not only were these soldiers saved by the decisions of one person, but their children yet unborn were also saved, and their children's children were saved. Generations were saved by one decision, by one person. But changing the world can happen anywhere and anyone can do it. So what starts here can indeed change the world. But the question is, what will the world look like after you change it? Well, I'm confident it will look much, much better. But if you will humor this old sailor for just a moment, I have a few suggestions that may help you on your way to a better world. And while these lessons were learned during my lifetime in the military, I can assure you that it matters not whether you ever served a day in uniform. It matters not your gender, your ethnic or religious background, your orientation, or your social status. Our struggles in this world are similar. And the lessons to overcome those struggles and to move forward, changing ourselves and the world around us will apply equally to all. 
I've been a Navy SEAL for 36 years, but it all began the day when I left UT for basic SEAL training in Coronado, California. Basic SEAL training is six months of long, torturous runs in the soft sand, midnight swims in the cold water off San Diego, obstacle courses, unending calisthenics, days without sleep, and always being cold, wet, and miserable. It's six months of constantly being harassed by professionally trained warriors who seek to find the weak mind and body and eliminate them from ever becoming a Navy SEAL. But the training also seeks to find those students who can lead in an environment of constant stress, chaos, failure, and hardships. To me, basic SEAL training was a lifetime of challenges crammed into six months. So here are the 10 lessons I learned from basic SEAL training that hopefully will be of value to you as you move forward in life. Every morning in basic SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam vets, would show up in my barracks room first thing in the morning and inspect your bed. If you did it right, the corners would be square, the covers pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. That's Navy talk for bed. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. It seemed a little ridiculous at the time, particularly in the light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough battle-hardened seals, but the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride. It will encourage you to do another task and another and another. By the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you will never do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made, that you made, and a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. If you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. During SEAL training, the students are broken down into boat crews. Each crew is seven students, three on each side of a small rubber boat and one coxswain to help guide the dinghy. Every day, your boat crew forms up on the beach and is instructed to get through the surf zone and paddle several miles down the coast. In the winter, the surf off San Diego can get to be as high as eight to 10 feet and it is exceedingly difficult to paddle through the plunging surf unless everyone digs in. Every paddle must be synchronized to the stroke count of the coxswain. Everyone must exert equal effort or the boat will turn against the wave and be unceremoniously tossed back to the beach. For the boat to make it to its destination, everyone must paddle. You can't change the world alone. You will need some help. And to truly get from your starting point to your destination takes friends, colleagues, and the goodwill of strangers and a strong coxswain to guide them. If you want to change the world, find someone to help you paddle. Over a few weeks of difficult training during my SEAL class, which started with 150 men, was down to just 35. There were now six boat crews of seven men each. I was in the boat with the tall guys, but the best boat crew we had was made up of the little guys, the munchkin crew we called them. No one was over about five foot five. The Munchkin boat crew had one American Indian, one African American, one Polish American, one Greek American, one Italian American, and two rough kids from the Midwest. They out paddled, out ran, and out swam all the other boat crews. The big men and the other boat crews would always make good natured fun of the tiny little flippers the Munchkins put on their tiny little feet prior to every swim. But somehow these little guys from every corner of the nation in the world always had the last laugh swimming faster than everyone and reaching the shore long before the rest of us. SEAL training was a great equalizer. Nothing mattered but your will to succeed. Not your color, not your ethnic background, not your education, and not your social status. If you want to change the world, measure a person by the size of their heart, not the size of their flippers. Several times a week, the instructors would line up the class and do a uniform inspection. It was exceptionally thorough. Your hat had to be perfectly starched, your uniform immaculately pressed, and your belt buckle shiny and void of any smudges. But it seemed no matter how much effort you put into starching your hat or pressing your uniform or polishing your buckle, it just wasn't good enough. The instructors would find something wrong. For failing the uniform inspection, the student had to run fully clothed into the surf zone and then, wet from head to toe, roll around on the beach until every part of your body was covered with sand. The effect was known as 
sugar cookie. You stayed in that uniform the rest of the day, cold, wet, and sandy. There were many a student who just couldn't accept the fact that all their effort was in vain, that no matter how hard they tried to get the uniform right, it was underappreciated. Those students didn't understand the purpose of the drill. You were never going to succeed. You were never going to have a perfect uniform. Sometimes, no matter how well you prepare or how well you perform, you still end up as a sugar cookie. It's just the way life is sometimes. If you want to change the world, get over being a sugar cookie and keep moving forward. Fire Nation, we have some amazing lessons to be learned as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsor. The fitness industry is a $94 billion industry and is not showing any signs of slowing down. F45 is here to prove it and they're inviting you to join them. F45 is a global fitness community where members and trainers encourage and motivate each other to reach their full potential. But F45 doesn't just provide clients with a premium fitness experience. They also offer franchisees a unique business opportunity. Personal trainers, retired athletes, and professionals seeking a departure from the corporate world are among a few of the more non-traditional investors opening F45 locations around the world. F45 equips their franchisees with a proprietary business model and a connection to a highly engaged global franchise network. In fact, in just six years, their network has opened over 1,700 franchises in more than 45 countries worldwide. And that is why F45 is one of the world's fastest growing fitness networks. If you're looking to join a movement built on innovation, motivation, and results, inquire today about owning your own F45 franchise at f45invest.com slash fire. That's F, the number 45, invest.com slash fire. Thinkific is the best platform to create, market, and sell your online courses, and we speak from personal experience. We've been hosting Podcasters Paradise on the Thinkific platform for nearly three years, and it has not only helped us welcome over a thousand new members to the Paradise family, but it has also helped us deliver the best user experience to our existing members. And that's only the beginning of what's possible with Thinkific. Whether you've got a book, a blog, a podcast, or training others through online workshops. An online course is an incredible way to grow your reach, generate game-changing revenue, and increase your impact. We've looked at a ton of options for creating online courses, and we chose Thinkific because it's so easy to use, and they have the best support team to help you succeed as a course creator, and they don't stop there. Thinkific has an exclusive offer for you, Fire Nation. Right now, you can sign up for one month free on their most popular plan, Thinkific Pro, plus leverage over one thousand dollars worth of training bonuses free visit thinkific.com slash fire and start building your online course business today that's t-h-i-n-k-i-f-i-c dot com slash fire Every day during training, you are challenged with multiple physical events, long runs, swims, obstacle courses, hours of calisthenics, something designed to test your mettle. Every event had standards, times you had to meet. If you failed to meet those standards, your name was posted on a list, and at the end of the day, those on the list were invited to a circus. A circus was two hours of additional calisthenics designed to wear you down, break your spirit, to force you to quit. No one wanted a circus. A circus meant that for a day you didn't measure up. A circus meant more fatigue, and more fatigue meant that the following day would be more difficult and more circuses were likely. But at some time during SEAL training, everyone, everyone made the circus. But an interesting happened to those who were constantly on the list. Over time, those students who did two hours of extra calisthenics got stronger and stronger. The pain of the circuses built inner strength, built physical resiliency. Life is filled with circuses. You will fail. You will likely fail often. It will be painful. It will be discouraging. At times, it will test you to your very core. But if you want to change the world, don't be afraid of the circuses. At least twice a week, the trainees were required to run the obstacle course. The obstacle course contained 25 obstacles, including a 10-foot wall, a 30-foot cargo net, and a barbed wire crawl, to name a few. But the most challenging obstacle was a slide for life. It had a three-level 30-foot tower at one end and one-level tower at the other. In between was a 200-foot long rope. You had to climb the three-tier tower, and once at the top, you grabbed the rope, swung underneath the rope, and pulled yourself hand over hand until you got to the end. The record for the obstacle course has stood for years in my class 
class began training in 1977. The record seemed unbeatable until one day, a student decided to go down the slide for life headfirst. Instead of swinging his body underneath the rope and inching his way down, he bravely mounted the top of the rope and thrust himself forward. It was a dangerous move, seemingly foolish and fraught with risk. Failure can mean injury and being dropped from training. Without hesitation, the student slid down the rope perilously fast. Instead of several minutes, it only took him half that time, and by the end of the course, he had broken the record. If you want to change the world, sometimes you have to slide down the obstacle head first. During the land warfare phase of training, the students are flown to San Clemente Island, which lies off the coast of San Diego. The waters off San Clemente are a breeding ground for white sharks. To pass the SEAL training, there are a series of long swims that must be completed. One is a night swim. Before the swim, the instructors joyfully brief the trainees on all the species of sharks that inhabit the waters off San Clemente. They assure you, however, that no student has ever been eaten by a shark, at least not recently. But you are also taught that if a shark begins to circle your position, stand your ground. Do not swim away. Do not act afraid. And if the shark, hungry for a midnight snack, darts towards you, then summon up all your strength and punch him in the snout and he will turn away. There are a lot of sharks in the world. If you hope to complete the swim, you will have to deal with them. So if you want to change the world, don't back down from sharks. As Navy SEALs, one of our jobs is to conduct underwater attacks against enemy shipping. We practice this technique extensively during basic training. The ship attack mission is where a pair of SEAL divers are dropped off outside an enemy harbor and then swims well over two miles underwater, basically nothing but a depth gauge and a compass to get to their target. During the entire swim, even well below the surface, there is some light that comes through. It is comforting to know there's open water above you. But as you approach the ship, which is tied to a pier, the light begins to fade. The steel structure of the ship blocks the moonlight. It blocks the surrounding street lamps. It blocks all ambient light. To be successful in your mission, you have to swim under the ship and find the keel, the center line and the deepest part of the ship. This is your objective. But the keel is also the darkest part of the ship, where you cannot see your hand in front of your face, where the noise from the ship's machinery is deafening and where it's easy to get disoriented and fail. Every SEAL knows that under the keel, at the darkest moment of the mission, is a time when you must be calm, composed, and when all your tactical skills, your physical power, and all your inner strength must be brought to bear. If you want to change the world, you must be at your very best in the darkest moment. The ninth week of training is referred to as Hell Week. It is six days of no sleep, constant physical and mental harassment, and one special day at the Mud Flats. The Mud Flats are an area between San Diego and Tijuana where the water runs off and creates the Tijuana Sloughs, a swampy patch of terrain where the mud will engulf you. It is on Wednesday of Hell Week that you paddle down to the mud flats and spend the next 15 hours trying to survive the freezing cold mud, the howling wind, and the incessant pressure to quit from your instructors. As the sun begins to set that Wednesday evening, my training class, having committed some egregious infraction of the rules, was ordered into the mud. The mud consumed each man till there was nothing visible but our heads. The instructors told us we could leave the mud only if five men would quit, just five men, and we could get out of the oppressive cold. Looking around the mud flat, it was apparent that some students were about to give up. It was still over eight hours till the sun came up. Eight more hours of bone-chilling cold. The chattering teeth and shivering moans of the trainees were so loud, it was hard to hear anything. And then one voice began to echo through the night. One voice raised in song. The song was terribly out of tune, but sung with great enthusiasm. One voice became two, and two became three, and before long, everyone in the class was singing. We knew that if one man could rise above the misery, then others could as well. The instructors threatened us with more time in the mud if we kept singing, but the singing persisted. And somehow the mud seemed a little warmer, the wind a little tamer, and the dawn not so far away. If I have learned anything in my time traveling around the world, it is the power of hope, the power of one person. Washington, Lincoln, King, Mandela, even the young girl from Pakistan, Malala, one person can change the world, giving people hope. So if you want to change the world, start singing when you're up to your neck in mud. Finally, in SEAL training, there is a bell, a brass bell that hangs in the center of the compound for all students to see. All you have to do is ring the bell to quit. Ring the bell and you no longer have to wake up at 5 o'clock. Ring the bell and you no longer have to do freezing cold swims. Ring the bell and you no longer have to do runs, the obstacle course, the PT, and you no longer have to endure the hardships of training. Just ring the bell. If you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. 
to the graduating class of 2014, you are moments away from graduating, moments away from beginning your journey through life, moments away from starting to change the world for the better, but it will not be easy. But you are the class of 2014, the class that can affect the lives of 800 million people in the next century. Start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never, ever give up. If you do these things, then the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a far better world than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. Thank you very much. Hook 'em horns. Wildfire Nation, if your skin on the back of your neck is not standing up right now, check your pulse because those are some powerful words. Man, I love that stuff. Hope you took some things away from it and I will catch you on the flip side. The fitness industry is a $94 billion industry and it's not showing any signs of slowing down. F45 is here to prove it and they're inviting you to join them. Inquire today about owning your own F45 franchise at F45invest.com slash fire. That's F the number 45, F45invest.com slash fire. Thinkific is the best platform to create, market, and sell your online courses, and we speak from three years of personal experience. Right now, you can sign up for one month free on the Thinkific Pro Plan, plus leverage over $1,000 worth of training bonuses free. Just visit thinkific.com slash fire.